today is Toronto Raptors Day. Uh, okay. Everything is pretty much the way you saw it when I quit yesterday afternoon. And uh, my new computer was delivered yesterday afternoon. Thanks, Phil. Now, uh, I did not come back to the model table and make the other five of these like I thought I might. I got too involved with trying to... Oh, by the way, the, the other five, I'm going to try and get the magazines on the right way around. Uh, yeah, I spent the, the rest of the day trying to get my video editing program on, onto the new computer. And I did. I got it up and it's working. I'm, I'm going to actually be using it to edit this video file that I'm taking right now. It'll be, it'll be basically my first one. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, now, there, there's several things that, uh, that I want to, uh, want to do today. Uh, I want to look into possibly changing the program that I'm using to, now I call it a program, maybe they call it a, an application now, but I, I'm going to be possibly changing to a program called uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. And the problem is with Premiere Pro is you can't buy it. You have to rent it. And it costs approximately a, a dollar a day or maybe a little less, a dollar a day here in Canada. Uh, you used to be able to buy it, but apparently you can't anymore. Uh, it seems to be the way things are going. It, I think that uh, the program I'm using right now is uh, from Cyberlink. And it, it's called uh, uh, Power Director. And I have the program I've been using for the last three or four years is Power Director 15. They keep changing it. They keep upping it a little bit, adding stuff to it. I don't know if it actually renders any 15. Like they're out, they're out with number 20 right now. Now I don't know if 20 renders any better than than uh, 15 does. It just probably has more bells and whistles that I don't need. Now, uh, the, the problem is with PowerDirector, even if I was to upgrade to Power PowerDirector 20, as far as I can tell, yes, I can edit 8K video, which this camera will do. It'll shoot in 8K. But I can't produce at 8K. It downgrades it to 4K. Now, it would be a, a really good 4K, but uh, Premiere Pro, you can actually put a genuine 8K video up onto YouTube. Now, you remember about a month ago, I uploaded a video at 8K, and it was a real full-blown 8K video. But what I did was I took the video file out of the camera and just uploaded it straight to YouTube. And you got everything from the time I pushed the button to start to the time I pushed the button to end. There was no, no beginning, no fancy music, no nothing. Which reminds me, I want to mention, you do not have to have all this fancy equipment in order to upload uh, an, an interesting little segment of what you're doing in modeling. Uh, I was watching a fellow this morning, an Australian guy, I think his name is Alex. It, it's Alex, right? And, and, he, and he's, uh, he's building a uh, one seven hundred scale of the uh, USS Tennessee. And, and he, so he just he showed that, but he did a lot of talking about what he's been doing lately and stuff like that. It, was, it, was, it, it wasn't long, I think it was only six or seven minutes long, but it was interesting. It, it captivated me, and I want to get going at this. You know, so Alex, if you're listening right now, I watched the whole darn thing, and uh, I, I got to admit, uh, I don't, I don't always watch uh, every, everybody else's production, because uh, I'm, I'm busy doing my own. Uh, okay, now, did, did I mention about this? I keep, I keep getting asked about this thing. How did I make it? I mean, where did I get it? That's the question I often get asked. Where did you get that? Well, I made it. And I, I, I keep forgetting 
which episode I said that in so that in my reply to that person I can't just quickly pop copy paste the URL and then it'll it'll take them right to where I said or showed how I did it. But about two years ago I actually had a, an episode that showed in detail how I made this. And this is a uh, all it is 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 a number number 18 blade okay and and it's ground down to look like this I just did it on my grinder you could probably use a file you want to be careful that you don't accidentally dull it because if you dull it and don't have an easy way to sharpen it you're screwed uh, now, now I can sharpen so, so uh, you know if, if I do and I do periodically sharpen this thing uh, I love this little thing for nipping photo etch Okay, so now I'm going to remember that in episode 1085, in fact, I'm going to sort of write it on the wall, so to speak. Well, I'll write it on the wall in my computer. And uh, <clears throat> what what episode I, I showed that in, so that when somebody asks me, I can just go quickly to it and say, hey, watch this. Anyway. Uh, yeah, where are we going here? We will have our, we will have our, our book opening and look at it. Uh, uh, briefly. Uh, I, I kind of want to get going here this morning and uh, uh, get my new uh, my new my new uh, computer going. I'm, I'm starting to think about other stuff and I, when I do that you know I often say I can't work and talk at the same time. Well I, I'm not one of those people that can think of think ahead about what they're going to say and then actually be talking. Uh, I lose my train of thought, as they say. In fact, my train gets completely derailed. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to push the stop button here, and uh, we'll do something at today. It's only 26 minutes after seven. There's a lot of day left, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've made my first change. And the change is this. I've gone from 4K 60 frames a second, 8-bit, to the same thing in 10-bit. And you're not going to notice any difference. The only difference I might notice is in editing. In that if I've got a scene where there is a lot of area that is dark and that you can't see the detail, I might be I might be able to bring out the detail in the dark area better but in the in the final production that you're gonna see you won't know that's happened uh, so it's, it's only something that's going to be of interest to me anyway let's uh, something that's of interest to all of us is this book now please don't embarrass me here in that I'm gonna have to get tools to get this thing open. Okay, it's the right one. Okay, now please don't be dark like the last one. Let's, let's see what happens here. I'm going to just open it up and see what we got. Oh, a fold out. Oh, I do believe this is in, uh, yeah, one, one 350 scale. So if anybody was doing a 1 350 Rodney, this, this would be kind of nice to have. Okay, um, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. And here's why. They printed it dark again. Somebody must think that's good. I don't think that's good. And I was talking about... <laughs> it's funny that the first one I open up to is that that gun we made that I got the ammunition the wrong way around. <laughs> yeah, some sort of poetic justice going on here, I guess. Uh, well, these aren't bad. Yeah, no, no, something like that. That's not bad. Let's see, can you see that? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go through this. It looks like most of these are of a format that's going to photograph really, really well. So I want to do a good job on this. And, uh, 
It might take me a while to do a good job. It's kind of interesting. I'm starting to want to look at it. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Okay. So, Carlo, you probably did a nice job on this. Uh, I hope it's uh, it's accurate. I mean, you got to remember that this is, is, is just drawings. It's somebody's idea of what it looked like. It's not like a photograph. But uh, some, some of these... 3D drawings that people are doing now are are uh, almost as good as photographs as long as they draw it right if you know what I mean and uh, well let's let's put it this way it's gonna give us a good reference to go on you know we're gonna be at this Rodney for at least a year and if it's anything like the way the hood went it might be two years and uh, we gotta get we gotta get on that Iowa Missouri problem though don't we you know we gotta have a stash going on you know, so watching Alex do his uh, uh, one seven hundred scale USS uh, uh, Sar uh, not Saratoga uh, Tennessee, um, and uh, I think there was a Saratoga too, wasn't there? I went to a school in Omaha called Saratoga School. <laughs> if any of you are from uh, live in Omaha, hey, I went to school at Saratoga School. The principal's name was Mrs. Carpenter. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was a long time ago. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's let's just move on here. Okay, here's what's happening. Uh, you remember when I was using the other camera, I was saying how I was having it set so that uh, when the mirror slaps up, there's a second delay before the shutter goes off to stop vibration. With this camera, you don't have that problem. It doesn't, it doesn't have a mirror. And even the shutter is electronic. So, uh, yeah. Uh, a few minutes ago, I was kind of doing a dry run here. I was sort of setting myself up, and I tried it, and I took a picture, and I thought, did it? Did I actually take a picture? Because it was on silent mode. So I had to take the camera off and go into the menu and, and reset it so that it, it, it beeps now and lets me know when it does something. Otherwise, you, you really don't know. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's sort of like your cell phone. Your cell phone rings... But it's not a bell that's ringing. It's a little speaker making a noise like a bell. Well, that's what this that's what this does. It it sort of beeps and then it makes a little when it, when you push the button down the rest of the way with the remote, it it uh, the, the sh electronic shutter goes off. But because it's electronic, it doesn't make any noise. So look, the speaker goes makes sort of a little clicking sound like a like a shutter. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Anyway, I'm going to just go ahead and do this here. Uh, and uh, I've got it set up so I can move everything around and I can I can zoom in a bit here like this this is the very first page and uh, try and get as close as I reasonably can and get everything in okay that's, that's pretty much centered I realize that there's that there's stuff in the peripheral here that you don't don't need, but I can if I want to I can always you know crop it out, but I'm I'm probably not going to care. So the idea is, okay, the idea is we go down part way here. Did you hear that? That means it, it's in focus. I press it the rest of the way, and it makes a little clicking sound to let you know it took a picture. Now for those of you who are camera buffs, uh, it's taking a high-res JPEG and a RAW file. And if I find that I can't adjust things the way I like it in the, in the high-res JPEG, then I can go into Camera Raw. And I also have a program that's called Lightroom, but it's I have, I have difficulty with Lightroom. It's, uh, some of you may have it. It's kind of, uh, it, it's really good, but it's the kind of thing, if you don't use it every day, you forget. 
uh, at least I forget. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and do this and uh, I probably will not have these photos attached to today's video. It's just going to take me too long to do a nice job. And uh, maybe in tomorrow's video, maybe it'll be a standalone episode of just, just this book. I, I got to be careful here because, you know, I, I don't really want to infringe on, on uh, something that's copyrighted. Uh, so this is sort of just, as far as I'm concerned, we're just sort of showing it in this episode. It's not like I'm trying to make money off of something that, uh, that Carlo, uh, Carlo's work here. In fact, I think I may have mentioned this before, I make nothing off of YouTube. You will never hear me say, please like or subscribe at the end of my video, because I'm not getting anything for it. Uh, that, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm in, in this for. I mean, it's just for the fun. Uh, anyway, uh, now, if, if you happen to be doing that, then fine. i got no problem with that. No problem with that. Yeah, I ha there's no paid advertising or anything like that on my in my channel. It's just, as I say, it's for the fun. Okay, I think I beat that to death, didn't I? Just let me uh, go ahead now and get this done. I'm guessing it's going to take me at least an hour. But it's going to be an hour of fun. We're halfway through the book. Uh, yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, my neighbor comes over for coffee. I could probably do a little bit more here, but I'm going to call it quits for today. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. All being well, we'll see you tomorrow.